How's it going everybody? Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and I'm coming to you today from West Chevrolet in Alcoa, Tennessee with this brand new 2024 fully redesigned Chevy Traverse RS. But before we officially begin this video, I would like to thank the folks here at West Chevrolet for allowing me to use this brand new Traverse RS for today's review. Once you're done watching, make sure you check them out at the link in the description below. So as usual, we'll go ahead and start this tour here on the outside of the vehicle and look at how this Traverse has been fully redesigned for 2024. Now, this, first of all, I think is a good looking vehicle, but let's just dive in and take a closer look at it and see what you guys think. So starting right here, looking at the lighting, you've got this nice LED light bar right here. You get one on each side. This is your DRLs. Come over here to the right side. I've got the turn signal on. You can see it also doubles as your turn signal and it's kind of a sweeping turn signal, which is really cool. As we make our way down below that, you have your LED headlights. This is kind of a Chevy theme now where they're wanting to put the DRLs and signals up top and your headlights down below. Stepping back, you can see their RS version of the new Traverse gets a fully blacked out grill with a black Chevy bow tie against whatever color you choose. In this case, this radiant red color, which is actually a really nice color. It is a $495 option, but I say get it if you're into red because it's a really nice color. Down here in the grill, you get the RS badge in red, the Rally Sport badge right here. I'll make our way down here to the side below the headlights we're going to find functional air curtain vents that go in right here and come out right here in front of the wheels functional air curtain vents to aid in the aerodynamics of this vehicle down here low on the grill you can see here's where your sensors and stuff are going to be and if we peer in between the grill slats you're going to see slats even further in there those are going to be the active grill shutters that are going to open and close as needed for aerodynamics and engine cooling otherwise you get a pretty big squared off front nose on this thing makes it look pretty rugged pretty tough whether it's in this RS trim or the off-road Z71 trim. And they didn't go crazy on the hood. They just gave you a few little indentations right here, one on each side to give it just a little bit of style. Making your way back, you get your blacked out mirror caps on the RS with your integrated turn signals and your 360 cameras. I'll come down here and check this out. Blacked out 22 inch wheels on this Traverse RS. The first time you've ever had 22 inch wheels on a Chevy Traverse. Nice blacked out Traverse badge right there on the door. Here on the RS, all your window trim is gonna be black right here in between the windows, above and below going to give you a nice cohesive black look right there in between the color and here on the c pillar is an interesting thing they've done look at this massive piece of colored bodywork they put here and then this glass kind of ramps up here and gets really thin right up here your actual visibility part of the window begins right about here what an interesting look that is i really hope that that doesn't cut down on visibility from the inside i guess we'll see in a minute if that does here in the back this interesting new led taillight design Make your way across, you can see your brake lights and turn signals are actually here off to the side. Definitely like that little, uh, I'm gonna call it a waterfall look right there. It looks really cool, I think. Coming down from that, RS badge here on the tailgate, Traverse badge over here in black again. If this was the all-wheel drive, you'd have an all-wheel drive right here. However, this is your front-wheel drive vehicle. And your reverse lights mounted really low down here in the bumper next to your reflectors. And then you get this really nice quad tip exhaust, these square tips. They look really good, really sporty to go with the sporty nature of the RS trim of the Traverse. You do have tow package right here with full connections. Normally that's got a cover on it, but in this case it does not. Coming up top, they've managed to hide the third brake light here in the black trim on the hatch. I think that looks really good. You can barely tell there's a brake light there until you step on the brakes. And right directly below that is the camera for your rear view mirror camera system and you see right here you got your rear wiper mounted pretty low on the glass very obvious i kind of wish chevy would have found a way to tuck it up here underneath the spoiler right here a lot of other mid-size suv makers are doing that and it looks really really nice i think this thing would look a little bit better if they'd done that but it's not the worst thing in the world and up top you get your roof rails also in that gloss black color the black against the red looks really nice on this car stepping back looking at it as a whole it is said that the new traverse is just ever so slightly longer and ever so slightly wider than the outgoing 2023 model i'm not exactly sure i've not really been around a 23 traverse so i can't tell you for sure but it definitely looks pretty sizable and the size of this vehicle is actually going to be very handy once we step on into the interior before we finish up outside looking down here checking out the ground clearance of the new traverse rs 6.7 inches of total ground clearance in this thing you do get a bit more in the off-road z71 trim but what this has is just fine because this is the more sporty trim of the car time now to jump on into the interior of the new 2024 traverse rs but first look at the key it is your standard chevrolet key but they did give you the blacked out chevrolet badge to match what's on the car i think that's really cool you do get the body matched color door handles in this case in the radiant red i do think in the case of this vehicle that these would have still looked really good in gloss black against that red but even in the radiant red they still look really good as we open up our door into the interior you're going to see that the red and black theme continues onto the inside of the new traverse starting on the door card right here it is mostly black you have some soft touch here on the armrest as well as here up on the top of the door with this really nice red accent right here i actually like the way this looks 
Love this gradient look as it fades from red into less red into more black. That's a really cool look. And you can see you got some power controls for your locks and your seat memory settings in that area. Down below that, of course, you got your power windows, power mirrors, all that good stuff that you expect. Down below that, a little bit of red stitching right here to give that a little bit of contrast. Nicely sized storage pocket here on the door and the button to release your rear hatch. Right here, you see the speaker grill, part of the 10 speaker Bose sound system in this car. It's a good sounding system. Right here on the door, so you got this nice shiny door sill plate right here. So Chevrolet looks really nice there. Fully adjustable power front seats. These are perforated because they are heated and cooled, which is very nice. These black seats with this red and white stitch accents, this red stripe right down the middle, that looks really cool and RS stands in the headrest right there with a little bit more of that red stitching just to give you that really nice sporty accent. And here on the floor now, the regular factory floor mats are in the back of the car. They're not installed right now. This particular sample also comes with the optional all-weather floor liners from Chevy, which are also stored on the back of the car at this moment. Now looking at the top of the console right here, starting below the climate controls, you got USB type C type A right here, 12 volt round port right here, and a big wireless charging pad for your phone. Dual cup holders behind that, storage compartment behind that under this lid and yes this is all piano black so prepare for that to be a bit of a fingerprint magnet behind that nice decent size center console pull that up you've got a nice little storage tray right here and it's a fairly deep console nothing really special in here no charging ports of any kind that i can see but it's a nice decent amount of space close that down come behind that you got two more cup holders that are going to come in nice and handy for that second row of seats and over here on the passenger side here's your glove box nothing special about it but it is a decently sized glove box so you can get a pretty decent amount of stuff in there. Making away from the center console, you do actually have a few physical climate controls right here. Temperature knobs right here, some buttons for your on and off, auto, fan speed, and defrost. Now the system doesn't have physical buttons and stuff for everything, but these are some things that are nice to have that for. Otherwise, your climate controls are gonna be right here along the bottom of the touchscreen infotainment system. They're always gonna be here, so you're always gonna have access to them. Touchscreen buttons for your cooled seats, your heated seats, for your recirc. You can change the positioning right here on the screen real quick. And of course for your sync button. Now if you want to do a bit more, you can pull the climate controls up here on the full screen view and you got a few more controls right here. Really more redundant controls for temperature positioning and fan speed, that kind of thing, but they're right here if you want them. Taking a better look at the infotainment now, this is Chevy's new 17.7 inch infotainment screen which is a really big, nice infotainment screen. A lot of great stuff baked into it, like Google Assistant, Google Play Store, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa. You got podcast here, news right here. All kinds of nice stuff in here. Pro Park Assist is going to help you to back into or out of a parking space if you're not too good at it or you just want to, the car to do stuff for you. You've got that right there. And you got a few quick buttons right here along the top of the screen next to your home key. Click this one here. You get this multi-pane display. You get two different panes. And you can choose you what you want to see on either side. So here on the left, you can choose you want your audio content. Maybe you want your tire pressure. Maybe you want your Google right here. Now you got your big map over here on the right side, which is a really nice thing to have. Or you can edit what you want over there. Maybe you want your map, maybe you want your trip information, or maybe you want your audio information, which, I mean, you don't want to need that on two panes. So let's go back to the map screen. Next to that multi-pane button, click this. This is going to be your audio. This is going to be where you're going to choose your audio source. Lots of different sources right in here. Click this next button. It's going to pull up your full screen map right here. Let's get rid of some of these little screens. And boom, here's your big full screen map on the 17.7 inch display. Looks really, really nice. High resolution. And it's very, very responsive. Of course, right next to that's where you're going to go to hook up a phone. And this button over here is going to access a bunch of on-screen controls. And this is the part that a lot of people are probably not going to like. A lot of your traditional controls that you find on the interior of the car have been now been moved from being buttons and switches on the dash two main controls here in the screen. So here's the dome light switch, gonna be the one to turn on all the dome lights in the car, power window lockout. Here's a camera button to pull up your cameras again, back out of that. Traction control button, that's where that's gonna be. Auto high beams, auto park assist, or another button there for that. And of course your parking sensors right there. All those are now in the screen instead of on the dash. Over here on the far left, you got the cool little volume knob right here and watch as it turn it up and down, it gives a little animation of the volume level surrounding it, looks really cool. Above that, there is this button right here. It's more of a touch button, really, to turn on and off your audio. It's more of a mute button, really. Down below that volume knob, here's a few more controls. You've got this one right here, which is for your lane keeping assist. This button right here is your headlight controls. Yes, your headlight controls are in the screen now. Chevy's doing that with a lot more of their vehicles. And here's another button for additional controls. 
going to be the other button that takes you into this on-screen controls menu. And right here directly in front of the driver, before we look at the gauge screen, look at the steering wheel right here. Really like the steering wheel. It's very sporty. It's this all black steering wheel with this accented red stitching in it. It looks really nice. Blacked out Chevy badge. RS badge right down here and a kind of flat bottom right down here. Definitely a little bit sporty. This of course being the more sporty trim. On top of the column, you see here's your sensors. These are going to be for your Super Cruise. And look here on the top of the steering wheel rim. Here is where the lights, the LED light for your Super Cruise system is going to be. Hopefully I'll be able to test that out because that's pretty cool. Super Cruise of course being General Motors version of hands-free driving and from what i understand this is really a pretty good system behind that of course here's your signal stock with all your wiper controls over here is your transmission selector where you're going to put it in reverse or drive we are started seeing this controller in the new blazer ev and of course that's also going to be in the honda prologue which is pretty much the same vehicle as that and now it's here in the new traverse and the way that the shifter works is pretty straightforward just pull back and down for drive pull back and up for reverse simply pull back for neutral and for park you're just going to push this button right here on the end and on the back of the steering wheel you got paddle shifters for your eight speed automatic transmission and if you need or want to go into low range you're going to hit this l button right here on the steering wheel and it's going to put you in that low range gear and then you'll be able to use the paddle shifters up and down to switch between the different gears and put it exactly in what gear you want to be in done with low range push it again to put you right back into drive and now looking at the 11 inch digital gauge cluster screen right here in front of the driver lots of great information on here but checking out right here right in the center you got your tachometer with your speedometer right here all your important information along the bottom like fuel range odometer that kind of thing a little bit of information right here off to the left side audio information over here to the right now if we want to change what we see on that screen we're going to use this button right here on the right side of the steering wheel as we press this button we're going to cycle through a few screens the next one is my favorite the full screen map you get a big full screen map right here directly in front of you with your important information off here into the left corner this is very very nice for quite a while chevy was not giving us a full screen map on their gauge screens in their cars but now with this the new colorado the blazer ev we're starting to see full screen maps in the gauge cluster in chevrolet vehicles this is really nice i do love this attention all automakers who do screens do something like this press that button again you're going to get this screen which shows your driver assist information right here of course your lane keep and your adaptive cruise control press it one more time and you get this nice calm screen which just gives you the speed right here a little bit of important information down at the bottom otherwise not a lot going on not a lot to distract you as we pull back and look at the dash as a whole i really do like the way this looks you got the center screen somewhat angled toward the driver but the passenger can still use it you got more of that same similar trim right here on the dash right here that matches up to the stuff on the door this red inside of this black trim looks really really nice a little bit of contrasted red stitching a little bit of contrasted chromish silver right there check it over here on the driver's side you get the same stuff i mean this is a really nice looking dash really nice looking interior overall and as we make our way up here's your rear view mirror but it's not just a rear view mirror it's a rear view mirror camera like we talked about a minute ago love that chevy's putting this in more and more of their vehicles i think every vehicle in the modern day should have this once again attention automakers do this got a series of buttons right here on the bottom push those you can change your brightness level you can uh, change your zoom zoom in and out and of course you can change the camera positioning up or down so a very configurable rear view mirror camera gonna be really really handy for when you've got this big cabin filled up with people and stuff and you can't see out the back window aside from that up on the ceiling not a whole lot special you got your dome lights and you got your sunglass holder right here and you got your controls for your panoramic sunroof and its cover and there you have it the big open panoramic sunroof for that nice open top feel you can see the sky while you drive all right time to open up to the second row notice i didn't just say rear it's the second row because this is a three row mid-size crossover but checking out the second row look at these doors you get most of the same trim you got up front the only thing it looks like chevy didn't include on the doors is that red gradient trim that was right here on the front door panels otherwise you still get all the soft touch on the armrest here up top you get, you get that nice silver trim right here with the red contrast stitching and your Bose speaker grills that are still trimmed in the nice shiny chrome. And your back seats also get most of the front end treatment. They get all the same red contrast stitching. They are perforated even though they're only heated, not cooled. Got that red race stripe that runs all the way up. Here's your headrest with that red contrast stitching. The only thing the headrest doesn't get is the RS stamping. You can see here you get seating for two here on the second row of the new Traverse with a nice amount of space to walk between the seats if you need to to get to the third row. And then here on the back center console, once again, we have those cup holders, which are going to be nice, easy reach for the second row. Down here, of course, your climate controls with this digital display right here. Here's your fan speed controller, temperature controller, auto, 
mode to change the positioning of the air. Heated seat controls right here, three level, couple USB type C ports, and you also get a household type outlet right there next to them. Your rear climate convents are actually up here on the ceiling, so you can aim those right back at you. Not down here on the center console. They might be a little bit better here in the B pillar, but that's still a decent positioning for them. And you see that panoramic sunroof runs all the way back right here above the heads of the second row passengers. All right, time to climb in the back of the Traverse and see how I fit. Now I've got the second row seats slid all the way back as far as it'll go. And check it out, I've actually got a pretty decent amount of room right here. My knees aren't touching the seat. And if you get somebody short, that will slide up even further. My head's not hitting the ceiling. I've got a nice amount of headroom. And if I want to, I can recline the seats as well. Not far, but I can recline them. Got a nice little armrest right here. So, you know, I don't get my arm tired. That's really nice. Got easy reach for my rear cup holders, my climate controls, and my vents are up here on the ceiling pointed right at my face. I can point them a little bit not at my face, but I don't think I want that. That actually feels really nice. So overall, the second row of this new Traverse, not a terrible place to be. All right, let's talk about accessing the third row of your new Traverse. Now, if you're a small person or a child, you can probably just walk through between the seats and it's not gonna cause a problem. But if you need a bit easier access than that, you got this little button here on the side of your second row seat. Just hold this button and that seat is gonna release and allow you to flip it all the way forward. I think you can allow yourself a little bit more if you flip the backrest forward. And let's see how easily I can get into the back of the all new 2024 Traverse. As it turns out, very easily. All right, now I've slid all the way over to this far right side where I've got this passenger side second row seat all the way back like I showed you before. And now there's not a whole heck of a lot of room for me back here with it all the way back. The best way to get a full grown adult in here is to slide this forward a couple of inches. Once you do that, there's a good amount of room. Now, my legs are up a bit high because of just the design of the car. I would still recommend this for short adults or for children, but if you have to get people back here for whatever reason, you can definitely do that. And you can sit three across if they're not all big like me. One cool thing though if, is if you do find yourself back here and nobody wants to let you out, there is a button here on the back of the seat. You can press that button. It's just like the one down below and slide that seat forward to allow yourself to more easily get out without having to ask people nicely to, hey, let me out of the car. Aside from leg room, head room is actually really nice. It's actually a little bit better than the second row, really, um, but that's neither here nor there. It's good either way. You do get some climate vents right here. Once again, directly in front of your face, you can aim them right at your face, and that feels really good. It is very hot out today, so that is a great position for the air vents in, the, in this row. Looking a bit more closely at the third row, you don't get near as many nice touches back here, but you do still get a little bit of contrasted red stitching in the seat backs and on the headrests. So they didn't completely leave the back out of the overall styling of the car but for the most part this is definitely the most boring row aesthetically you don't get a lot back here you do get a cup holder and a little storage cubby on each side and you get a usb type c port on each side as well all right time to talk cargo area let's reach in here hit the button and let that gate go up for us and here is your rear cargo area and first thing let's get these mats out of here these are the all-weather floor mats optional that i was telling you about earlier told you they were in the back of the car here they are Let's get those cleared out of here and talk about this cargo area. All right, checking out our cargo area here in more detail before we talk about space, let's just talk about it overall. And actually you can see it's actually a decent amount of storage space for a mid-size three row crossover. This is definitely nothing to complain about. This is actually a little bit more than our 2019 um, Highlander has. Pick up on the floor right here, you get some underfloor storage. So you get a little space where you can hide things or put things you don't want rolling around on the floorboard, whatever close that down you get some tie down hooks right here two on each side right down here at the bottom you get a 12 volt round port right here and on this rs trim only not on any other trim you get these right here the controls for your power folding rear seats so push these buttons right here you can drop down the third row and you can drop down the second row. Now, the second row is drop down only. These buttons do not control putting it back up. So once you got those down, you do need to put them back up manually. All right, let's talk about cargo space in your new 2024 Traverse. Now, no matter which trim you get, whether you get all wheel drive or front wheel drive, here's your specs. With your third row up and in place, 22.9 cubic feet of storage space. One little bit more, put the third row down, and now you have 56.6 cubic feet of storage space. But now you just need all the space you can possibly get for loading plywood or bicycles or whatever, or maybe an air mattress to go camping. Put the second row down, and now you have 97.6, nearly 98 cubic feet of cargo storage space in the back of your new Chevy Traverse. 
that is quite a bit of space. All right, time to get up under the hood and see what's powering our newly redesigned 2024 Chevrolet Traverse RS. Now, what you're looking at here is not a V6. The V6 is out for the new 2024 Traverse. Not really a surprise. That's where the auto industry is going. Everybody's dumping V6s for fours and eights for sixes. That's just where we're headed. What we're looking at here is a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, putting out 328 horsepower, 326 pound feet of torque, made it again to an eight speed automatic transmission and your choice of all wheel drive or front wheel drive. The only trim that you don't have to get a choice on is your Z71 off-road trim, which comes in all-wheel drive only. Zero to 60 in this thing, right around 6.9 to 7 seconds, so it's not a lightning bolt, but it's not a slouch either. As for fuel economy, if you opt for the front-wheel drive configuration as this example is configured, your fuel economy is rated at about 20 miles per gallon city, 28 highway. If you decide to bump that up to all-wheel drive, you're looking at about 19 city, 26 highway. As for towing, your new 2024 Chevy Traverse is rated to tow right up to just about 5,000 pounds. All right, so I said I was gonna try to test out Park Assistant on film today. So what we're gonna do is go to the infotainment screen, tap on Auto Park Assist, and it's gonna pull up this menu. You're gonna tell it whether you want to exit a space or park. We're gonna park, and you're gonna tell it how do you wanna park. You're gonna park in a parallel spot to your left, a parallel spot to your right, or are you going to back in to a spot to your left or a spot to the right? Now I'm going to attempt to back into a spot to the right here. I tried this out in this spot before filming, and if it does do the same thing that it did before, it should try to park itself right here next to this Ram Promaster van. So let's mount the camera outside and give it a shot. All right, so the car's in drive. I'm going to put, go into auto park. I'm going to tell it where I want to park in that spot off to the right, and we're going to pull forward. And what it's saying is start by pulling past a parking spot. It will let me know when it's in a position to back in. Okay, it just went green. I'm going to stop. I'm going to tell it park in vehicle, push that button. All right, it says take your hands off the wheel, release the brake. You can see my hands, one out, one's out the sunroof and one is out the window. And this is very nerve wracking. The car is going to use the cameras and sensors to back itself into this parking space and keep a watch. You can see my hands are not even inside of the vehicle right now. My foot is over the brake pedal, ready to take over if I need to. But otherwise, the car is doing everything. And I will admit, this is a little bit nerve wracking to watch in the mirror as it gets really close to this van. It's not hitting anything. It's doing everything it can to not hit everything. See, it's actually repositioning itself because it's like, oh no, I'm gonna hit this van. Watch, keep in mind, here's my hands. You're watching this in real time as, uh, as I record it. Uh, this is not gonna be edited out whatsoever. And once it's done, we'll get out and judge it. So it did have to reposition, it did have to pull forward and reposition itself a couple of times. All right, the car has put itself in park. It says parking complete. Let's see how it did. All right, here it is to the right side of the car. You can see it's probably about, oh, I don't know, eight to 10 inches off the line. That's not too bad. It's a little bit further off the line here on the driver's side. It's like it tried to hug the right, towards the right side. So hopefully whoever's parked off to the right of the car isn't gonna be mad about how close it got. <laughs> but otherwise it did a decent job. See here, you got a few inches of the nose sticking out past the lines and you definitely have a lot of space behind it. So I imagine you probably after it's parked wanna go ahead and throw it in reverse and back it up a little bit closer to yourself. You've got the backup camera and the parking sensors to tell you if you're gonna hit something and it vibrates the seat if it thinks you're gonna hit something. So the parking assist is good, it works, but you're probably gonna to wanna to manually put it back a little bit further once you're in. Now it also has a parallel parking option, which is probably gonna be what you're really gonna to wanna to use it for if you're no good at parallel parking, if you didn't get a chance to learn, or if you just never did get it, that might be what you wanna use that system for. But you know, it did pretty well overall. I think this would pass in most public parking lots. Now you saw how jerky it looked. Um, if this thing is parking itself and people don't know what they're looking at, people are definitely gonna think that someone who doesn't know how to park a car is parking this car, but it did okay. All right, y'all, I think that's about gonna do it for the tour of the new 2024 Chevy Traverse RS. Now let's get behind the wheel, get this thing out on the road and see what it's like to drive it. All right, let's get out here and drive this new Traverse RS for 2024. And first thing I will note, it's actually pretty comfortable sitting in this car. It feels nice. And so far those 22 inch wheels don't seem to be making the ride all that harsh. Now let's see what kind of power we have. 
All right, you got a pretty decent amount of horsepower, which is to be expected with 328 horsepower, but it is still a two and a half liter turbo four cylinder in this fairly sizable midsize crossover. Now, one thing you are gonna get from this engine is plenty of noise. I'm sure we already noticed that. Let me just hit that accelerator one more time. You can definitely tell from the sound that you have a four cylinder engine in this car. That is absolutely no mistake. Let's see what it feels like over some of these rougher sections of this um, business park road here. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, you're gonna feel the bumps. This is a sporty version, so it's gonna be, you know, a little bit more harsh, stuff like that. But still, it's very comfortable. I mean, you felt those bumps, but they weren't like jarring, I think is the best way to put that. This definitely feels like something that you get it up on a smooth highway, um, you could definitely cruise for hours at a time in this thing, no problem. And it's got the super cruise system, which is just going to make it that much better. Now, unfortunately, the road I'm on, being a business park road, is not on General Motors' list of roads that Super Cruise works on. So I'm unable to demonstrate that on this road. All right, let's see what kind of handling we get out of this new Traverse. It is a sporty trim that doesn't make it a sports car, but let's just see what it feels like. Okay, here's a good one, let's see. There's a little bit of body roll you can feel. I mean, it's, but it's really slight. It actually does pretty well. Let's get the little shake test here. I mean, yeah, I can't complain. It feels pretty good, actually. Let's do one more right here. Let's get up to speed. 30, 35 should do. Let's see what she feels like. That's my stuff sliding around, but yeah, it actually, it does all right. There's some pretty, uh, pretty gnarly turns right there. And it did pretty good. Overall, I think this is a pretty nice car and this is a really nice vehicle to drive around in. It's not too big, so it's not too cumbersome. You've got great visibility all around. Hold on, let me check. Okay, now the C-pillar is a bit big and the rear quarter window is a bit small. So your C pillar is a bit big, which we pointed out from the outside. Your quarter window behind that is a bit small. And if you're in the correct seating position, that headrest is gonna block your view. In this camera's position, the headrest especially blocks the view. So you don't have the greatest visibility out that corner of the car. If you aim your head right, you've got good visibility, but it could, it could be better. It's a cool design on the outside, but it definitely takes away from your rear corner visibility. Thankfully though, you do have the camera system in here, which you're gonna get front view, rear view, side views, and you've got that digital camera up there for the rear view mirror. So you do still get a lot of great visibility in this car. So although those C pillars are big, you have enough technology in this car that, you know, you should be able to mitigate that pretty well. Otherwise, I got really no complaints about this thing. It's comfortable. It's a nice place to be. Chevy's interiors are getting better and better as the years go on. And this is a really nice interior. It's somewhat classy. It's somewhat sporty. It's a decent place to spend time. The technology is nice. The screens are nice and vivid and easy to use. Not intimidating whatsoever. Um, I do like this thing. I do wish they didn't take away so many physical controls and put them in the screen, you know, such as all these controls right here, but that's, that's what we're doing now, so whatever. Let's talk about pricing for your new 2024 Chevy Traverse. Now your new Traverse comes in four trims currently. I can't remember if there's supposed to be a high country trim coming eventually or not, although that would be really cool. And if they do that, I definitely want to get behind the wheel of one of those as well. But here's your four trims and pricing in ascending order. Now all the prices we're going to give you are for the all wheel drive variant. First, you have your LS trim, which starts right around $40,009. We're going to say $41,000. Next up is your LT trim. That's going to start you around 43,004. Step up from that, you get the Z71 off-road trim, which is only available in all-wheel drive. That's going to start you right around 478, and then you have this, the RS trim, which will start you right around 576. There's not a whole lot of options to add on, uh, mainly accessories such as mats and stuff like that because this RS trim pretty much has everything that is offered on the Traverse. So 57.6 is your starting price according to the Chevrolet website. Now that is for the all wheel drive. Now if you decide you only want the front wheel drive version of any of these trims, remember that does exclude the Z71, which is all wheel drive only. Subtract $2,000 and you've got the starting price for your front wheel drive variant. All right, here we are. We're getting the new Traverse up on the highway. We're gonna get up to speed. 
We're gonna turn on the adaptive cruise control system with this button right here. You probably can't see it. All right, get up to speed, set the speed at 65, push the blue cruise button. We are green and we're gonna let the car take over. Here's my hands, nowhere near the wheel. Now I am ready to take over at a moment's notice and there is that sensors right there on top of the column making you pay attention. Turn on the signal and the car is executing a lane change all by itself. I want you all to see my hands are going to bring them down right here on my belly and I'm just going to let this thing drive. I don't know if you can tell but the green LED on top of the steering wheel is on and it's just it's just cruising. We can bump that speed up a little bit because we're into a different speed zone and here we go. And it's doing it. It's following just fine. It's adaptive cruise control. So if it does come upon a slower car, then that's not going to be a problem whatsoever. Uh, let's adjust the gap to be a little bit closer so it doesn't freak out too soon. And this is awesome. Let's go ahead and execute a lane change. Here it goes. It's doing its own lane change. You're going to kill the signal. And boom. All right. I am actually going to take over now and get off on this road because I want to get on a road where it's going to follow some curves. And this highway goes for a pretty straight ways. Now, I will say that I wasn't talking about it, but that stretch of highway was nice and smooth. And this is a nice, comfortable ride up on the highway. So that's also a very nice thing. I wanted to touch on that. It's very comfortable to drive, even with those 22 inch wheels. I'm not sure what the limit is on this road. I want to say it's 45. So we're going to back the speed all the way down to 45. We're going to set the Super Cruise. Information not available. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so that's the one thing about Super Cruise. It does not have road information for all roads. This road I'm on right now is not one of the roads that it has Super Cruise information for, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to do something different. But while I am making my way to a road that hopefully we have information for with Super Cruise, I will once again touch on the comfort of the ride. Now we're on this two lane secondary road. This is not a high speed road. And while it's not extremely rough, it could be better. And this is a comfortable enough car. This is this would definitely make a great road trip vehicle. You've got the Super Cruise, you got the technology, and despite those 22 inch wheels, whatever they did with the suspension, you've got the comfort. But here in the RS, you've also got somewhat of the handling too. This car actually offers a lot for the money. Now yeah, $54,000 for an RS, that is a lot of money for a mid-size crossover SUV, but still, I mean, this thing has a quite the package. All right, we're getting back out on a different four lane that heads back towards the dealer. We're gonna set the cruise control speed to 60 and set the super cruise. We are green, hands are off the wheel and let's see how it does. Now this road isn't all that curvy either, but it does still have some curvature. So let's put the hands down here on the belly and see how it does. See, and there it goes. It's following that curve in the road. No problem. Uh, it's telling me to take over. No road information. Really? Suddenly, this stretch doesn't have road information? That's interesting. Okay, so it was doing great there for a second, and then it decided it didn't have road information. So yes, it's not perfect. When it does have road information, it seems to be a good system. I've heard many reviewers praise this Super Cruise system and say that it is good and possibly even better than Tesla. But the one caveat to that is General Motors is still adding more and more roads to the database over time. So not every road is available. And obviously up to a point, this highway was, and apparently now it is again, because here I am off the wheel. I don't know if maybe it just lost it, I don't know. This is a pretty major highway in this area. So I imagine that it's gonna have, um, why is it changing lanes? I did not initiate a lane change. It just automatically did initiate a lane change to get around the slower vehicles. That's interesting. But uh, <laughs> like I, I know I didn't hit the lever. That threw me off for a second. But there's it passed a slower vehicle. That's actually kind of cool. And it did it safely. It made sure to know. Here it goes. Is it going to do it? Oh, it tried to. It tried to do an auto lane change to the right, but it decided it wasn't good. Let's go ahead and hit the signal here. There we go. Now it's gonna auto change lanes. And here we go, we're just gonna continue cruising. Now this goes on straight, this stretch road goes on straight for quite a while. So I'm not gonna bore you with watching me drive straight for a couple of miles. 
but I mean, it's doing good. It's holding the lane. All right, so we've been following this straight for a while. At one point, it did freak out a little bit and said it was unavailable for a second. And the, just, and the LED here went blue, but it came back pretty quick after I saw me taking control. We're going to take this curve here, see how it follows. Super Cruise disengaging. Drive, oh, it thinks I'm driving in an exit lane. That's interesting. I thought it was just going to follow. So let's reinitiate. I don't know if it will now. It still thinks I'm driving in an exit lane. Well, it started to follow that curve pretty well, and then it recognized it as an exit lane, and now it knows we're on a road where it has no information. So, okay, I think that's going to end my Super Cruise testing right there. But for the most part, yeah, the Super Cruise is a pretty pretty good system. It's pretty cool. It'll let the car be able to drive itself as long as you're paying attention. Now, for enthusiasts, that may not be ideal. You know, we just we're enthusiasts want to drive their, the car themselves. But if you're someone who sits in heavy commuter traffic in the morning or in the evening and it sucks to be on and off the gas pedal and all this stuff, Super Cruise will go all the way down to zero miles per hour and reaccelerate when things start. So it's a pretty decent system. Big thing, General Motors does need to continue adding more and more roads to the database so more and more roads are available to Super Cruise, roads that I believe should already work with it. Personally, it is a work in progress, and I think that if they keep on working in the direction they're going, that General Motors might be able to uh, make this happen. All right, y'all, so I guess that's just about going to do it for the brand new, fully redesigned 2024 Chevy Traverse RS. This is a really nice car. I really do like this thing. For a mid-size crossover SUV with a little bit more dimensions than the previous, it's pretty nice. Now, the fact that we got rid of the V6 and got the turbocharged 2.3 liter four-cylinder, not really my thing. I wish we still had a V6 but this is where we're at now, so hopefully this will turn out to be a reliable powertrain. I guess we'll have to see. But otherwise, I like it. It's a nice looking car. It really does look good. It looks sporty, aggressive, and classy all at the same time. This radiant red is a great color. It's got a lot of great tech in it. A lot of stuff that I've already shown you on the channel that Chevrolet is bringing us in a lot of the new cars now. It's a pretty comfortable car, and it's got that awesome Super Cruise system, which I hope General Motors will continue to work on more and more and make it just the absolute best one they possibly can, because so far, they got a pretty good thing going on with that Super Cruise. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did enjoy it, you know what you need to do. Like the video, share it, and if you haven't already, get down there and hit that subscribe button for me. Once again, huge special thanks to the folks at West Chevrolet of Alcoa, Tennessee for allowing me to use this very nice new fully redesigned Traverse for today's review. Once you're done watching this video, please make sure to check them out at their link in the description below where you can check out their amazing inventory. They're great people here and I'm sure they'll appreciate your business. I definitely appreciate them. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be it. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.